Hello, my name is Nadine Maher and I'm a special education teacher and board certified behavior analyst based in New York City. I work with families of children with learning and developmental challenges as both a parent coach and consultant at the office of Dr. David Salzberg. Today I'll be sharing with you some strategies for supporting your children with toilet training. So the first question is why should we toilet train? Toilet training increases independence, which is important for all children of all ages. Toilet training also teaches self-help skills. So not only toileting, but it, in, it helps with dressing, undressing, and hand washing, which are all very important life skills. A significant amount of time, energy, and resources are spent on changing diapers, as you know. So I'm hoping the strategies in this a video will help you with this as well. The traditional approach to toilet training that you might find if you Google toilet training may not work for children with special learning needs. So the traditional approach is that they will tell you when they're ready. You may read a few books or show them how to do it. You might expose the child to a potty or to a toilet and wait and see what happens. But as I mentioned, this might not work uh, for children with special learning needs um, who might need a more systematic approach, which will be more effective. So that's what we'll be covering today. This is creating a system to train your child. For example, using schedules and timers, which we'll talk about, also using a lot of visuals to help your child understand the process, and reward charts or reinforcers will be very helpful. Again, if you Google the main signs of readiness for toileting, these are some of the signs that you'll find. That your child shows some discomfort when their diaper is soiled, that they stay dry for long periods of time, that your child appears to know when they're about to eliminate. So they might change their facial expression, they might crouch on the floor or go into a room and hide. Your child will show interest in the potty or the bathroom, and that your child will come and tell you when their diaper is so soiled. And these signs typically appear between the ages of 18 and 24 months. But again, for children with developmental delays and special learning needs, they might not show these signs between this age range. So it's important that children start toilet training around the age of three, even if they're not showing these signs, because they may need to learn these different skills, and we'll go over how to teach them. Also, children with developmental delays might have difficulty with the following areas. They may have some physical or medical challenges, which you definitely want to discuss with your physical therapist or pediatrician. Uh, they might have difficulty with language, so they might not be requesting the bathroom by themselves, they might not understand a lot of language, so we need to support this as well. Dressing and undressing may be difficult for them. They may have fears of bathroom or the loud flushing sound or the hand dryers in public restrooms, so it's important to work on these fears before you start toilet training. Also, children may have not as be a not be so aware of those body cues. Um, so changes in routine or learning routines may be difficult for your child or using different toilets. So it's important for them to learn and these skills and practice. Before you begin, it's important to consult a pediatrician to rule out any med medical issues. So if your child is not feeling well or having pain when urinating or having a bowel movement, it's important to address these issues first before you start toilet training. So first and foremost, you want to prepare yourself as a caregiver. It's important to be very relaxed and remain confident during the whole toilet training process. Um, choosing the best time is key. So not when you're on vacation and not when your child is sick or you're working on weaning off a bottle or a pacifier. Perhaps a weekend or a day off from school or a vacation time is the best time to start so you can devote as much time as possible to this. Uh, making sure you have the energy and the time so that you can make this your priority is important. And making sure all caregivers and teachers are on the same page as a team. So it might be helpful to have a meeting um, so that everyone is using a consistent plan for toileting. 
Some ways to prepare your child. You can have them watch family members or siblings go to the bathroom. You can allow your child to see eliminations in the toilet. It's important for them to see what pee pee in the potty looks like so that they can learn what this is all about. Let them experience flushing so you can make sure they're not scared of it. Um, you can definitely read books about the process and I'll share some books with you that have great visuals for young children. Uh, if you choose to use a potty instead of toilet training onto the big toilet, you can put, place it in a play area and let your child explore and use dolls to play um, with the potty for a little bit before you start toilet training, just to get them used to the, to the potty and for them to have some fun with it. Um, other ways to prepare your child, we want to work on teaching them how to dress and undress. So teaching them how to use their thumbs, to hook into their underwear and pants and learn how to dress and undress so that they can be a little bit more independent with this process. And also thinking about which words you wanna use during toilet training. Some families choose the words pee pee, some families use potty or bathroom. So thinking about what vocabulary and what words you wanna use when you're helping your child learn these vocabulary words as well. We want to teach your child to cooperate when given instructions. Of course, we know around ages, you know, three, four, five years old, a lot of children may, you know, have some behavior challenges when we're asking them to do something. But working on that compliance will help with toilet training. You also want to limit salty snacks during to toilet training as they cause water retention. And so children will hold on to water when, when they have a lot of salt rather than release it. Um, so things like goldfish and pretzels may not be the best snacks to be giving them. Um, and we'll talk about giving them a lot of water and liquids to help with toilet training, which will be important. Here are some tips on what to buy. Uh, you definitely wanna buy a lot of underwear. I fully believe in toilet training in underwear rather than pull-ups so that your child can learn how to wear underwear and feel comfortable wearing them. If your child loves Thomas the Train or Elmo, it will be helpful to buy underwear with fun characters on them to help motivate your child to wear them. Um, on Amazon.com, there you have Carter's training pants, which have a thin plastic kind of lining inside the cotton underwear, which can just help uh, be less messy. Um, but it's up to you what underwear you want to buy. Definitely having some darker colors will be helpful so that you can see if your child is having an accident. If you put on white underwear, oftentimes you may not see that your child is soiled. A modified toilet seat is important, especially for smaller children. So in this picture, you'll see one with handles next to it to help your child feel safe and secure on the toilet. Uh, and a step stool can be helpful to help your child learn how to step up and sit on the toilet themselves and also to place their feet on the step stool when they're sitting to help them feel secure and comfortable. This is another example. Um, you can find a toilet seat that looks like this with the handles on the side and using a step stool that might have two steps if you have a, a smaller child. Some other uh, items you definitely want to buy are wet wipes to help with accidents. A digital timer will be helpful so that it, this is mainly to help the adults um, in the home remember when it's time to go to the bathroom. And also a highly preferred reinforcer. So Twizzlers or a preferred um, candy or snack will be helpful to have something that you can give your child only for successes on the toilet. So you want to make sure that you have something saved that's extra special only for successes on the toilet. You cannot give your child this reinforcer at any other time so that it doesn't lose its value. Here are some other ideas. What's important is that these reinforcers or rewards need to be immediate so you can place them in a Ziploc bag in the bathroom so your child can see them but not have one until they have a success in the toilet. So some ideas are M&Ms or Skittles or candies that already come in small sizes and you can just give one at a time. 
The rewards need to also terminate on their own if possible. So using a reward such as iPad might be tricky because after a few minutes, you're gonna to have to take it away from your child. So food and drinks are helpful so that they finish on their own. And once your child finishes eating their Skittle, then you know they, it's finished so that you don't have to take something away. Also, they have to be tangible rewards, so something your child can see and hold and touch. And of course, highly motivating. So again, you wanna keep this reinforcer only for success in the toilet. Preparing your environment can be helpful for messy cleanup time. Um, so rolling up any rugs you have, if you do have carpets, you want to make sure that you either cover them with um, some a thin shower liner or make those areas temporarily off limits um, for your child if possible. Place the timer where you can see it, but your child can't play with it. So we'll talk about how to use the timer. Um, and keep your child engaged maybe on the floor if you don't want them to be on the couch while they're um, toilet training. Uh, you might want to take away stuffed animals or anything that could get soiled and have your child only play with plastic toys that are easy to clean if there's an accident. So we're going to jump right into the steps to follow when toilet training. So number one, you're going to dress your child in underwear and a t-shirt only, and this will help you catch any accidents that you see. So if your child is wearing sweatpants, you might not see that they're soiled. So having them just in their t-shirt and underwear can be helpful. You can also tuck the t-shirt in or tie a knot in the back so you can see when an accident is happening. This will be very important because we want to try to catch the accident if it's happening and rush your child to the bathroom and hopefully they can finish on the toilet for one more opportunity to learn about the toilet training process. You're going to set the timer for a predetermined amount of time. You could start with 25 minutes. So your child is in underwear and a t-shirt and they're playing on the floor and you're going to set the timer for 25 minutes to start. You allow your child to play with their toys and you want to encourage them to drink as much water or juice as possible. So maybe you have water next to you and you're constantly drinking too to help your child imitate. Um, you can also think about fruits or popsicles, watermelon, things uh, that have a lot of water in them to help encourage your child to keep drinking. The goal here is we want children to eliminate many times throughout the day so that you can help teach them this process faster. And the adult in the room is watching intensely for any signs of the need to go pee pee or to have a bowel movement. So you want to make sure you're not on the phone or you have other plans um, that that take you away from your child you want to stay with your child and watch for these signs especially if this is your very first day of toilet training so the timer is on and when the timer goes off you want to prompt your child to request the bathroom so this is a very important skill to teach your child how to request on their own um, and so you can use a picture and have them give you the picture of the toilet to help request, or you can teach them how to say a phrase or a word. Again, we wanna meet your child wherever they are. So if they're nonverbal and not yet using language to, to communicate, they can use pictures, they can use the sign for toilet or bathroom, which is the letter T like this. You can teach your child to do a modified version so that they are requesting the bathroom. We don't want to just say it's time to go to the bathroom and take your child. You want to help them request. So you would say to your child, it's time to go pee pee. You say pee pee and have them repeat pee pee back to you. So they're learning how to independently request and then take them to the bathroom. Turn off the timer and prompt your child to walk to the bathroom. We want to avoid carrying our children to the bathroom or picking them up and putting them on the toilet. We want to help them do these steps independently. So you can prompt them from behind and guide them to the bathroom and guide them on how to step up onto the step stool and sit on the toilet. Of course, we need to teach them how to prompt, um, how to put their underwear up and down. So prompt your child to pull their underwear down and sit on the toilet. 
And then while they're sitting, you can engage in conversation or sing a song with your child and encourage them to sit for at least 15 seconds. I don't believe in having children sit any longer. I think they need to learn how to go into the bathroom, eliminate and get off and then wash their hands and go back to playing. So my advice is, you know, 15 to 20 seconds on the toilet. Of course, if you know that your child is about to have a bowel movement, maybe they're passing gas or they're hiding behind the couch trying to have a bowel movement, those are times you might want them to sit longer. And it's okay to read a book to them or to sing a song to encourage them to sit for longer periods of time. If your child eliminates in the toilet, this is the time you want to use excessive social praise. So what I call throwing a party, make it a big deal. A lot of praise, great job making pee pee on the potty, a lot of reinforcement. And this is when we want to give the child the reinforcer that you have that's special just for eliminations. So if it's an M&M or a Skittle um, or a small sip of chocolate milk or something special that they have, give it to them right away if you're comfortable doing that. Otherwise, they can get off the toilet, wash their hands and have the reinforcer immediately after. Um, so again, using a lot of social praise and making this a big deal will help with encouragement. We want to keep this toilet training process as positive as possible. Reset the timer and let your child go play and we start again. When there's an accident, here are some steps to follow. So let's say you put the timer on for 25 minutes and at minute 10, your child ha starts to have an accident. Some ways to prevent an accident is to constantly give your child reminders, saying things like, remember, pee pee goes in the potty if they haven't gone in a long time. If your child starts to do the pee pee dance or wiggle in their seat, try to encourage them to go, even if the timer has not gone off. You can say things like, let's try to make pee-pee and prompt them to say pee-pee. Or you can say, oh, I see you're wiggling. That means you have pee-pee. Let's go try. So you want to encourage your child to go during those moments to prevent an accident. However, if your child does have an accident, make sure to remain calm and prompt your child to rush to the toilet so that your child finishes in the toilet. So this is not considered a success. Your child will not get the special reinforcer, but it will be one more opportunity to teach your child that pee pee goes in the potty. And so while they're eliminating in the toilet, make sure to point and show them that this is what pee pee in the potty looks like. Again, for very young children or children with developmental delays, language delays, it's important to point this out to them because you're, this is a new skill that you're teaching them. And you want to use neutral language. We don't want to reprimand or punish them for accidents. We can just say, remember, pee pee goes in the potty. Try again next time and use very neutral language. After the accident, you want to prompt your child to take off their soiled underwear and put on a new pair. Uh, my advice is not to dump a bowel movement into the toilet if your child has an accident in their underwear. Don't do this in front of your child. Many children see this and think that first I go have number two in my t underwear and then mommy or daddy will dump it for me. And so that's really important that they don't see you do this. Um, so if you want to put it into the toilet, make sure your child's not watching. You reset the timer and you begin the process from the beginning after you've cleaned up your child. One thing that would be helpful to do is to measure progress. Um, so you can use some sort of chart or, you know, take a piece of paper and write down the day and the time and what time interval you're using. So if your child is going every 25 minutes, it's important to write this down and you can write A for accident and S for success to keep track of how many accidents your child is having when they're at the 25 minute interval. When your child is dry and not having any accidents at the 25 minute intervals for three consecutive days, you can increase the time by five or 10 minutes. So if there have been no accidents, you can now have the interval be 30 minutes or 35 minutes and you, you keep adding a few minutes on each time your child is spending three consecutive days with, with no accidents. 
managing non-compliance. So many children throw a tantrum, you know, or have a big reaction when there's a new rule or a new routine. Um, so it's important to remain calm and not engage in any verbal back and forth discussions. When you, at, when you tell your child it's time to go to the bathroom, try to prompt them through it. It can help to maybe take a toy to the bathroom as a transitional object so that they are more compliant. It might help to read a book when they're on the toilet or to play a favorite song on your phone or to sing with them to help make this more fun but it's important to make sure that they comply with that instruction. Here are some ways to teach your child how to request the bathroom. So vocally, your child can say potty or I need the bathroom or I need the potty. Any phrase or language that you decide as a team is appropriate for your child. As I mentioned, the American Sign Language sign for bathroom is this. Um, you can use picture symbols on, from Google Images. Uh, or board maker symbols. You can ask your child's teacher if they use any symbols for bathroom at school that they can send home for you to use at home. It would be helpful to have consistent visuals. Um, you can even hang the visuals around the wall just to help your child remember to ask for the bathroom. So you can make big versions of the potty visual and hang them in their you know, playroom or your living room so that they can keep seeing these visuals and keep reminding them. If you need to go pee pee here, you can use this visual. Using a visual schedule that you maybe tape in the bathroom next to the toilet uh, for toileting can be helpful. This is just one example. Uh, if your school uses a visual schedule for hand washing or for toileting, please ask them for a copy that you can hang up in your own bathroom at home. Again, it's important for your child to see the same visuals and for this consistency, this will help them. So here's another example of a visual schedule for toileting um, or for teaching your child when you make pee pee in the potty, you get a lollipop. Of course, on the right side here, you can replace this with any reinforcer that you choose, maybe M&Ms or Skittles or special snack that they love. Um, so this is one way to show your child pee -pee in, first pee pee in the potty, then you get a lollipop. And this is something you can hang in the bathroom. When they're sitting on the toilet, maybe it can be on the wall across from them. So you can remind them using this visual of what the reinforcer will be. This is another example um, I used with a family where the child had a choice. So when I go to the bathroom, when I go to the potty, I can have one M&M, a piece of chocolate, or a gummy bear. And the child got to choose their reinforcer. So when she chose gummy bears, she would take off the visual and put it up here on the Velcro piece. And it was helped to motivate her because she had a choice of three reinforcers. So this can be helpful too. Some helpful tips. If possible, train on the bathroom toilet, not on a small potty. This eliminates one step for you as the caregiver. Um, and also make sure your child is using different bathrooms. So when you go to people's homes, help, help them, encourage them to go there or in a restaurant, um, just to make sure that you're helping them generalize this skill. Some children start to only use the bathroom at home, but will refuse to use any other toilet. So it's important to do this from the beginning. For boys, you want to decide as a family if you want to teach your child how to sit or stand when eliminating, when, um, when having a urination. Um, for younger boys, I suggest having them sit because at the very beginning, they're just learning to eliminate anything into the toilet. Um, so if pee-pee comes out or a bowel movement, they're already seated and in a position to be successful. And then later on, you can teach them how to stand to urinate. For boys, you can also place a fruit loop um, or they make these toilet time targets, which are little, um, which are little, uh, foam shapes that you put into the water and it makes a fun butterfly or teddy bear to teach your child to aim into the water if they're learning how to stand and urinate. Um, they make these, pull-ups makes this cool alert diaper um, that becomes a little bit cold when your child has an 
you know, an accident or has goes urinates in their pull up. Um, and this can help for children who don't show those signs of awareness of being soiled. So if you're choosing to toilet train in pull ups, this could be one option for you. Um, however, I still strongly encourage you to train directly in underwear. These are some um, printable materials, some stickers and charts that you can use from this website. Um, visual schedules, there's a website here you can use, as well as Boardmaker Share and Google Images that has a lot of visuals that you can use for toilet training. Um, some online videos that might encourage your child. Crawford the Cat is one that has a cute uh, hand washing video. Also, sesamestreet.org has a potty time with Elmo that might be. Um, helpful for your child to watch and just encourage them and making this toilet training process more fun for them. Here are some books that I recommend and I, I like them because they have an, a lot of great visuals in them. Um, also the Everything Potty Training book and Toilet Training for Individuals with Autism and Related Disorders are some books for parents to read um, about this process. Um, I've written an article for Special Parent Magazine. The link is right here for that article, uh, which is again a step-by-step -step guide to toilet training, similar to this video. And here are some apps that can be great, again, for in, just re encouraging your child, uh, making this process fun. Of course, if they love Elmo or they love Dora, it's fun to find a, an app that has those characters in it. Um, some more ideas for toilet seats. Um, this Primo folding toilet seat is something that folds up, up into a small toilet seat that you could carry with you in a diaper bag um, or leave in the car for when your child is out in public. Um, and this toilet seat on the right is called Bemis Mayfair um, and it clicks directly on top of your toilet seat at home. The opening is a little bit smaller for smaller children and it might help them feel more secure sitting on the toilet. And those are my strategies. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video and please feel free to reach out anytime um, for any further questions. Thank you.